The Souls of Black Folk, written by W.E.B. Dubois. The image to the side is one of the many covers of the world classic. This is a Barnes & Noble classic version. Image found on barnesandnoble.com. This presentation is presented by Sydney Brockington. What is The Souls of Black Folk about? The image seen to the side is the same from slide one. This image is found on barnesandnoble.com. The Souls of Black Folk The Souls of Black Folk is a 1903 compilation of literature essays that examines the all-too-common 20th century problem, racism. The author, W.E.B. Dubois, shows how racism still lives within society following the Civil War. Dubois explains in a series of essays how in each aspect of life, there is racism that lives within them, whether this be socially or economically. This cornerstone in African-American literature also introduces key terms, the color line, the veil, and double consciousness, which would go on to become important ideas in the study of race. The seminal body of work has received rich approval and love by Black newspapers at the time, in which they've stated should be read and studied by every person, white and Black and today it still should be read and studied by every person. The image on this slide is one of many book covers for The Souls of Black Folk. This is the Create Space independent publishing platform found on Amazon.com. Who is W.E.B. Dubois? This image is found from Wikipedia. This is via the United States Library of Congress's prints and photographs. Dubois is pictured here at around 50 years old. Right now, we will be learning more about the author of The Souls of Black Folk. W.E.B. Dubois, born William Edward Burkhardt Dubois, was born on February 23, 1868 in Great Barrington, Massachusetts. He died on August 27, 1963, age 95, in Accra, Ghana. He is best known for his work in founding the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, NAACP, and a series of books during the Reconstruction era. He had two children, Yolande and Burkhardt, both of which he talks about in The Souls of Black Folk. He attended Fisk University and was the first African American to receive a doctorate from Harvard University. The American sociologist spent his life's work towards gaining rights for African Americans, having died just a day before Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech, and a year before the Civil Rights Act was enacted. What makes The Souls of Black Folk a world classic? The image seen here is an additional classic cover version of The Souls of Black Folk. This one is from simonandschuster.com. The Souls of Black Folk is a world classic because it evaluates the over 400-year-old question, will African Americans ever be able to escape the premeditated stereotypes embedded in the minds of white Americans? Some key points that support the fact that The Souls of Black Folk is a world classic is that the novel introduces key terms such as the color line and the veil, which have gone on to become extremely influential terminology in Black history and the study of race. The book also provides reasoning and evidence as to how and why racism still exists after the abolishment of slavery. I will explain these two key world classic ideas next. Why and how is The Souls of Black Folk influential? Again, this is one of the many covers for the classic. This one is from Biblio.com. The influence of The Souls of Black Folk is substantial. The introduction of key terminology, such as the color line and the veil, are key in the study of race and history. The color line is the hierarchical division between the races. This means that white people live on one side of the line where there is better treatment, services, and opportunities. Black people live on the other side of the color line where there are substandard treatments, services, and opportunities. 
The veil directly connects to the color line. It is a psychological exemplification of the color line. The veil exists within the minds of all people. In white people, it forbids them from seeing black people as fully human. In black people, it prevents them from seeing outside of the stereotypes around them. The souls of black folk also influences how black Americans everywhere view their freedom. This book allows black people to become more influenced in their stance towards freedom. This book also gives people a first-hand account as to how freedom should be obtained. He mainly focuses on higher education as being the most liberating method for black people. In chapter 6, entitled Of the Training of Black Men, Dubois goes into detail about higher education and how it is the lead force of black liberation. Dubois describes how, quote, education leaps to the lips of all. Such human training as will best use the labor of all men without enslaving or brutalizing, end quote. This education is key to liberating black individuals in America. How does the souls of black folk stand the test of time? This image is also an additional world classic cover of the book. This one is from blackamericanweb.com. The Souls of Black Folk stands the test of time in a variety of ways. The idea of double consciousness, a term that Dubois introduces in the World Classic, explains how Black people live a somewhat double life. They exist as a Black person and American all at once. As Dubois explains, quote, An American, a Negro, two souls, two thoughts, two unreconciled strivings, two warring ideals in one dark body, end quote. This is so very clear in the standings of Black people today. Many African Americans face this double consciousness on a day-to-day -day basis. Their Americanism and Africanism are warring in their ideals and rights. The veil also exists in today's society, further proving the novel's ability to stand the test of time. As most recently seen in the brutal police killing of George Floyd this past year, the ideas of the veil live within police officers. For these police officers, they view black individuals as not human forcing inhumane methods of force on black men, ultimately resulting in wrongful death. The psychological aspect of the veils lives within the minds of these police officers, causing many black deaths by brute force. Started after the murder of 17-year-old African-American Trayvon Martin in 2013 by a local community watch officer, the Black Lives Matter organization and movement has gained major headway protesting for those who have been victims of police brutality and all extreme brutality. This organization works towards the very same thing Dubois dreamed of, life without the veil. Life without premeditated stereotypes from white Americans. To continue, the ideas stated in Dubois' 1903 essays are still present today. Although slavery has been abolished and equal, rights have been attained. Are African Americans really free? In 1903, when the novel was written, slavery had just ended and the segregation era was beginning. The points Dubois makes are all from a 1903 perspective, yet his points are shockingly current. As quoted in the introduction of the Penguin classic Souls of Black Folk by Ibram X. Kendi, quote, Dubois dismantling of those like Washington, who are apparently accommodating to Jim Crow, is as insightful and impassioned and intrepid as the abolitionist dim dismantling of those accommodating to slavery in the 1830s, or the Black Lives Matter dismantling of those accommodating to mass incarceration and Black death since 2013. End quote. Why is 2021 still so startlingly similar to 1903? White Americans still hold on to over 400-year-old stereotypes of Black people. The color line still exists. Black people are still offered lesser opportunities. White people are still often the first choice for jobs and interviews. It allows black people to ponder the question, are they really free? What are the criticisms and competing theories of the souls of black folk? This is an image of Booker T. Washington and W.E.B. Du Bois whose theories would compete against each other largely during this era. This image is from visitvulcan.com. Washington's theories were one of the main competing theories of Dubois. 
I will examine this concept next. Firstly, the main criticism of Dubois came from major white newspapers. Quote, this book is indeed dangerous for the Negro to read, end quote, said the Nashville American. These white newspapers believe Dubois, often credited radical ideas, could cause African Americans to become too aware and too knowledgeable in their own history. A major competing theory of the souls of black folk came from Booker T. Washington. Washington's beliefs differed majorly from Dubois. Dubois focused on, more on education as a means of gaining equality. Dubois significantly disagrees with Washington's theories of which are described in Chapter 3 of The Souls of Black Folk, entitled, of Mr. Booker T. Washington and Others. Quote, Mr. Washington distinctly asks the, that Black people give up, at least for the present, three things. First, political power. Second, insistence on civil rights. Third, higher education of Negro youth. End quote. These theories of Booker T. Washington compete with those of Dubois, who believed in fighting for political power, insisting on civil rights, and higher education of Black youth. Closing The Souls of Black Folk will forever be remembered as a book that changed the course of American history. W.E.B. Dubois' series of literature's essays set the stage for hundreds of years of future Black history. The world classic altered the way African Americans view not only their history, but their path to liberation. The Souls of Black Folk examines the history of Black Americans and their extensive impact on America as we know it. The essay questions, would America have been America without her Negro people? As the book is received in the future, Dubois hopes that America shall rend the veil and the prisoner shall go free. Dubois, along with those continuously fighting for the rights of African Americans, hopes for a world in which Black people are free. The images to the side show, in the past, how people, especially Black people, protested for their rights, as seen on the bottom picture. And at the top is a more recent picture of a protest, when protesting for the abolishment of the police, which really is strictly calling for the abolishment of the veil which Dubois talks about in his series of literature essays entitled The Souls of Black Folk. References. These are my cited references. The pictures were stated aloud and were typed on each slide. Thank you for watching.